Hello, this is John Noble. I'm with that Chris Gordon, who's been making me laugh a lot, on Hellblazer Biz, and we're here to have a bit of a chat. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to all my viewers and listeners. I'm Chris Gordon, and I welcome you once again to Hellblazer Biz, part of the BSPN Podcast Network. This is the show where you get to have your questions answered by your favourite TV and film stars. This episode, I bring to you an actor who I very much admire. I admire all the actors who come on, but this one especially so. His repertoire is immense, with many credits in TV, film and theatre. He was seen as the despicable Denethor in The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers and The Return of the King, and also the lovable Walter, and then also the not-so-lovable Walternet in Fringe, through to being a Sleepy Hollow, Elementary, and so, so much more. It is truly my privilege to bring to you Mr John Noble. <laughs> Everybody, I am proud and have the honour to have the company of John Noble today. So, good afternoon, John, over in Texas. <laughs> G'day, Chris, over in Wales. Yes. North Wales. North Wales, that is correct. <laughs> well We've uh, already est- established and have had a good little chuckle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've, covered, we've covered the world economy and we've sorted that out. We have. We know, we know what to do there. Exactly, exactly. Um, only know. people would listen to us. <laughs> If only that were the way of all of all things, it'd be great. <laughs> the way of all things, yep. Mm. <sighs> sort the world and their wife out. As you know, thank you. I do. Hey, 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 yeah. yeah, well, my my wife is actually so sick of Texas that she's gone back to Australia for a while. Oh right, okay. And and she said, John, well, let's go back to live in Australia. Said, well, no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'm still busy. So yeah, it's interesting. As I said, after forty something years, I guess we'll survive it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure we will. <laughs> I might have to go and live in London if, uh, during the week from uh, if I get another job. So yeah, I'll be leaving the family up in North Wales and going to work in you London. Will. Yeah, Possi- do- possibly. Uh, I work in IT, so that's my oh. my main job is working in sort of IT, uh, mm. and this is a secondary which I'm I'm working sure. to build up and build up, and I've got TV mm-hmm. pitch and stuff. But we'll, we'll get what, uh, what, what do you do in IT? Um, process stuff. Yeah. So it's like process management, you know, managing, Mm-mm. writing the processes for people to put changes in for IT or... Oh, so you say you show your programming? No, no, it's more of the actual, the, the process behind, not the not the actual programming process, it's the it's the theoretical process of like, when I'm, someone I'm phones up, you have to follow this process or, yeah, you know, right. and, yeah, things yeah. like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's what I've been doing for a few years. So it's not too, mm-hmm. it's not too bad, yeah. It's, uh, it, keeps, cool it, it keeps the bills coming in while I'm working on this. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, I, I, one thing I've found when I'm started this up as well is something when I speak to a lot of actors is the fact that it yeah, there's a lot of times when <laughs> when you've got to you know a lot of people do have the second jobs, especially in acting, just to sort I think, of get I, by. I think it's, I think it's all right. I mean, most most uh, actors sometime in their life will have, have taken other jobs. There's nothing particularly shameful about it. No, it's not at all. Just, what you have to do, and uh, um, I was a bit lucky in the sense that I, I, uh, I found out that I always knew that I was quite good with teaching big crowds, you know, master classes and so forth, mm-hmm. and I was never never intimidated at all by numbers, but I was intimidated by the thought of going in week after week and teaching class. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, I, I then discovered it in in a slow period. And uh, discovered that I loved it, and I got great results. So that uh, I would say that teaching became, uh, for a long time, almost equal in my my love affair with uh, with my craft. Uh, I, I still do it whenever I can, uh, not very often these days, but you know, it's good. Excellent, excellent. I mean, you've, you, to be fair, you have a very esteemed career on screen and off screen on the theatre as well. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it goes back a long, you know. It does go back a long mm. way with theatre. I mean, I know theatre is a big love of yours. Do you actually have a preference for which you prefer, screen or theatre? Mm. 
Well, it's it, an unusual thing to say, Chris, but uh, uh, yes, I did spend a long time in theatre and, and uh, then didn't, and then I went back and did a couple of um, plays in New York in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. which I thoroughly enjoyed, both wonderful roles and really well received, so that was good to go back there and uh, and, and find out it all worked, you know. Yeah. And In fact, I think I'm going to do another one at the end of this year. But, but to be honest, my favourite, my favourite is most people's unfavourite, which is television, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. television is, uh, uh, it's so fast, it's so fast, and there's no, no one's got time to uh, to tell you what to do, or direct you per se, mm -hmm. so you go in there and you, you sort of, oh, I, go in there and, and fly it, and, uh, and, and uh, make decisions, and trust first instincts, and all the great things about acting, and, uh, and I love that. So, sort of not having to be stopped and pulled back all the time yeah. by anybody. Uh, so television is great. Um, film is very slow, mm -hmm. very slow. Okay. You see, theater, theater is interesting. I mean, it, it, I had to get used again of the uh, rehearsal period. You know, mm. uh, what, what do you mean? Usually, I I would have you know a couple of hours to look at this. What do you mean? You got three weeks? <laughs> But as it turned out, I, I really I was working. I worked with some terrific people, and and, and we had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, yeah. so theatre's all right. It's all right, mate. Okay, cool. This, um, and this is a completely different media. I mean, I again, I started out when I was back in high school. I did drama, and obviously that was where I was, I was originally wanting to go into. I was steered into a more sensible career path. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I did all my drama stuff, and I was going to do Lambda and everything. I mean, you know, so I, I love the stage. It was it was lovely. It was just, it's the feeling when you're on stage. I think when you it's a very more. I think it's much more intimate. Um, not that I've had any <laughs> much. I've had one film I've done last year, so I've not had experience filming. But you know, it's a much more intimate environment because you you're like one with the audience, and it's probably different. Well, you can be, or you can be. Um, it depends on 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 your view of of, of You see, I think this mm -hmm. when you walk into when when you're on stage. Uh, you, you you can actually create almost a direct l l line with everyone in, in the audience. Yeah. And that is an energy. That's a palpable thing you can feel. And and you can sense when it's it's, sli it's sliding, and uh, and that works as a really interesting monitor on on which way to go. Mm -hmm. And yet a lot of uh, I've heard many many actors come off at, at such interval times. Oh, it's a terrible audience tonight. Well, no, it's not. It's the audience is not terrible. <laughs> It's just different, and we're just, you know, we can't be going, oh, this, this is crap, but it's not. They're quiet sometimes. Mm -hmm. But he had this connection, and it's called... Oh. Uh, Ralph Richardson used to do a thing, so Ralph Richardson used to do a thing, so he would uh, walk onto, uh, say, London stage, and, yeah. and before he spoke, he would scan the audience surreptitiously all the way up to the gods, mm -hmm. You know, the top layer. Yeah. And, and, and so the story went, and everyone thinks, oh my God, he saw me. He knows <laughs> I'm here. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. <laughs> so I do that too. I have to say, you get a slow look around. Not that you can see much, but it's a little trick. Excellent. That's that. Yeah, it is right. It's, uh, say someone in the audience, you, you do. You see when you see, see actors looking out at you, it does look like you're. Uh, oh, you've lost a video there. They got me. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, better, you better pay attention because you might look again. <laughs> Exactly, or, or exactly. Uh, I've lost your yeah. video here. <laughs> yeah, I know, I just saw it, mate. It's, uh, it'll be back on in a second. No was, problem. Yeah. There we go. Low, low. This bloody stuff. It chews up the uh, battery, doesn't it, Scott? It does, yeah. Yeah, that's... I uh... know. Well, I just got a charger there. But uh, anyway, that's by the way. <laughs> no problem. Uh, I mean, you've also been I mean, artistic director for the Atlantic of the Stage Company. Over 70 mm. productions there. Did you enjoy being in that artistic director and overacting? Or mm, no. No, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's funny. I, I, yeah, I did, I did that, and it was a good company, and uh, and I had success uh, as a director too. I really did, you know, mm -hmm. quite a lot. But I never really considered myself a particularly good director. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what I mean? I just, I never felt. That it was my niche, um, and I, I thought that there are, you know, those that directors that come in with this great vision and oh shit, that frightening. Yeah. And uh, so I, I guess I direct that I direct mainly like an actor directing actors, and that's mm -hmm. not a bad thing. Uh, but I never considered myself to be a, uh, a director, although as I said, I did a hell of a lot. But that was just circumstances came. Yeah. 
when you're running a small theatre company or involved in a small theatre company, it's it's all hands on deck for pretty well everything, mm. uh, and, and which is what I loved most so much. I loved about um, community theatre. I still think community theatre is what was amazing, yeah. And yeah. and small theatre stuff, uh, you know, you get your dig in and you're still paying the stuff. Because when you go when you go into the union houses, you're not allowed to anymore. I mean, we did a transfer into one of the big houses with one of our plays, and I was out there with the paintbrush or whatever I was doing, and the boy said, John, come here, you can't do that, mate. You can't do that here. It's a union house. Go away. <laughs> but what am I going to do? So it was. Oh, yeah, hang the lights, do the light. Loved it. Community theatre. Mm. Excellent, excellent. What kind of genre of theatre do you prefer? Drama, mute, comedy, or...? Um, you know, uh, uh, it depends on how well it's done. Yeah. It's, I mean, comedy's really hard. Mm. Really hard Definitely. to do. And, uh, and drama can be overindulged to do. And, uh, I, I kind of, therefore, it is, in a sense, try not to think of, of genres in, in any aspect mm. or any more than I think of uh, with, with the performance, whether he's a bad guy or a good guy, whatever yeah. he is. People don't know what, I don't. I, I, what I do, Chris, and, uh, is simply go in to play mm-hmm. with absolute truth that character and how he fits into this story. That's what I do, and it doesn't matter if it's because we are people. People are so funny. We, we, we're bloody hilarious. You don't have to try and be funny. You know, you don't have to tell jokes. Just be real. And be, it's, it's, no, that's the Walter Bishops of this world, didn't they? they never tried to crack a joke. <laughs> no. They were just obser- they were just observing what mm-hmm. people did, and you know. And, and so he, he became funny, and that, <laughs> that that rule goes through with drama too. In, intense drama, there's some extraordinary uh, a comic relief. It has to be, yeah. Not because someone said put comic relief in there, just it's the way we are as human beings. Yeah, you know, we crack, uh, crack jokes about the most horrible things. We you do, know? yeah. There's plenty of that going on at present. I know, <laughs> you know, in your country now, uh, there'll be plenty of people sort of, you know, doing the yeah. best they can. Yeah. Um, and that's that's how we survive. But there's always a round of sort of macabre jokes after something horrible's happened, and, and it's just oh yeah, definitely <laughs> just survival stuff. Yeah. And as long as it's not done by presidents or people in charge, you think <laughs> fine. Don't didn't say that, did I? <laughs> no, no, didn't. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> no, I did nothing. Yeah. I didn't go into the I'll be I'll be kicked out of the country now. <laughs> I only asked that because I went on Saturday. I don't know. I saw the play that goes wrong. I don't know if you've heard of that one. No. no. Uh, it's a the Mischief Theatre, and uh, they were on tour. It's, it's basically, it's called The Play That Goes Wrong, and they play, they're all players, um, but they're playing a community, they're playing like they are a community theatre, putting on a serious murder mystery, yeah. but whatever can go wrong goes wrong, and it it's slapstick comedy, and Wonderful. it's obviously, like you say, it's, you know, to act is hard, but to act yeah. comedy is very, very difficult, and I think even my ten-year-old son, my wife, and myself, we couldn't breathe because we were laughing from start to finish. So I, was, I thought it was, it was a perfectly done. That's perfectly wonderful. Done play. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're clever lads. I mean, got girls and lads to actually pull that off because the timing is so critical. Definitely, because there's bits of stage it's falling awful. and everything, so they had to get it perfect. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and then you, you just get a ping and and hit the next bit right on, and it ring the house down. If you're yeah. one second out, it won't. You know. But exactly. It's lovely. It's lovely. <laughs> it when I talk about that energy, you can feel off the audience. Yeah, come, you touch it out there. <laughs> and they roared. The crowd roared. Oh, yes. Definitely. <laughs> um, moving on, you've been in some tremendous productions as well. Uh, yeah. How does it feel to be an essential, if not despicable, part of the Tolkien universe, for example? It's a, you know, it's a. It, it's, a uh, it, it's, un- still hard, it's still hard for me to. To, to grasp how that all happened and indeed uh, how that thing went on to become massive. I mean, the, mm. the, the books are superb and people have read them and uh, and they're a critical part of British literature. There's no question about that. Uh, but then to... And then when we went to New Zealand, Peter Jackson was so prepared, so prepared, and and they, they were staying so accurate Mm-hmm. to the books. Everything was referred back to the books. So if I had a question, I'd go see Philippa Boyden, the writer, and say this, and she'd be flicked through the books and say, oh, yeah, you're right, absolutely, he does say that there. Mm-hmm. And that was the reference. Cool. And I reckon I reckon that that's why uh, that Rings trilogy was such a runaway hit, because people all expected us to, you know, Hollywood it. Yeah. 
Mm. And he didn't even go for Hollywood actors. I mean, he just went around the world and found actors that could say the words. That was the truth. Uh, because you hadn't heard of most of us, I can tell you that. You know, uh, there was probably three or four actors that people knew. Yeah. In there. Um, <clears throat> and the rest of us were just brought in because we could do the job. Mm. And uh, it was a long, slow process, too, um, as, because he, he literally did search the world. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. uh, anyway, that was uh, a, a rare and wonderful uh, time. It was a difficult time because Denethor was such a, a hard character, mm. uh, it, particularly in the sense that he was given no um, no introduction in that uh, in the series. In the books, there's, there's more of it. And so he basically appeared uh, as a villain, yeah. sort of a crazy villain, uh, so what I what I had to, what I had to had to do is backtrack like hell mm -hmm. and uh, and research and and and, and create it create a backstory where it wasn't there to to bring us to this point in time where we met this man yes. what brought him to this point mm -hmm. so it wasn't like a, just this crazy guy walked in off the street he was uh, and I understood Denethor I really by the time I did him I understood him so well. And why he was like he was, and how he could say the things he says, you know, mm. and uh, understood uh, because of of events in his life. It's terribly, terribly sad character, but God Almighty, you know, it's so lonely. And, and uh, yeah. anyway, that's yeah. so. It was a hard. It was a hard one emotionally to 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 play. Yeah, um, to play uh, uh, truthfully, to play mm -hmm. truthfully, and not as as a. Uh, as, as a cutout, not as a two-dimensional cutout of a villain, because he, he wasn't. And you know, they only gave me one redeeming line. Mm. One redeeming line. Okay. And, and it was right at the end when he looks at the, the Faramir and he says, "Faramir, my son." And so that was my redeeming line. I was looking forward to that. <laughs> the, 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 the line happened with me behind a wall of flame on a burning pit. <laughs> With stuff going on all around, I was, Man, me and my son. What the hell did he say? <laughs> that was it, mate. Oh, oh this great! Ah, oh, that was it. <laughs> oh dear, but yeah, I mean, I was actually when I was mentioned to some work colleagues who are huge Tolkien fans as well. They're very, very, very much so. Um, they did say, "Please pass it on," because they thought that you actually epitomised the character from the book perfectly. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, so that's, that's and that's really important to me. So thank you, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that means that means I did my job. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> it's great. No, I've, I've had a few people have said that to me when I, when they knew I was talking to those. They, they was just like, you know, the yeah, Denethor was absolutely spot on to what they what they could imagine, what they picture from yeah. the book as a character. Mm -hmm. One person did ask whether the chicken was actually very tasty. <laughs> Not very nice. <laughs> very nice the fourteenth time through. <laughs> yeah, film, filming, as you know, is, is is all to do with continuity and, and yeah. shot and take after take after take after mm. take. And it was uh, so I, I was sitting up in that great big scene. Well, other and I was just uh, what I do with when I've got business or, or uh, actions. Uh, I mean, I rehearse very carefully beforehand. So that, mm -hmm. for continuity, so they fit in the same order, in the same place, and on the same lines. So yeah. Otherwise, you can't cut the film together. And I was sitting up there, and they put the. The, this plate of food in front of me, and I was working my way through it. It's almost like I'm going, okay, one, two, three, four, five. That's literally mm. like that choreography. And of course, you 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 act and so I'm doing this and practicing it. And at one stage, I picked up a couple of uh, tomato or something, mm -hmm. and I, I, I ate it. It squashed down my face. I didn't think much about that. Peter <laughs> Jackson came waddling out as fast as you could from behind his bank of 400 monitors. He said, what, what did you just do then? Can you do that again? Yeah. <laughs> I said, sure, Peter. He said, can you do it more? And hence the great tomatoes. With, <laughs> yeah. oh, you know, the, the crunching of all that stuff. So, yeah, he loved all that. And he wanted he wanted more of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that <laughs> was that, that was just just technical, really. It was only because I was going through my paces, as it were. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic. It's good to hear the sort of the background to that scene as well, because it was one of the. Yeah. It was a very vile scene to us to go through to see, just mm, how. But it's also it's also I think one of the great cinematic scenes. Uh, oh, definitely. The... It's astonishing the way that uh, it's astonishing the way they that they filmed it and then cut it together, and what they did with the soundtrack is uh, uh, just amazing. Mm. Uh, it's so powerful. Mm. It is. I mean, it's one of my favourite 
trilogies of films, even all of them stand alone, but you know, as a tri- it's, it's just outstanding. The cinema, everything in it, the acting, the cinematography was just oh, it was just brilliantly done. <laughs> I know, and that darling cinematographer who died two years ago. Oh, I heard but, that. It's very sad. Uh, uh, well, he, he's a, he wasn't an old man, and, and he's uh, he and Peter were were a pair. They were a team. They were mm. such a team. And uh, I, I've not spoken to Peter since the death of uh, Lizney, but it, what must have gutted him. Must have been, be like losing your right arm. Yeah, he was the loveliest man too. It's, it's, oh. Anyway, but he wasn't. You know, you might say that some people are, are passing when they're in their late seventies or eighties, and you say, "Well, fair enough." But he's in his fifties or something. You go, "Oh, come on, too young, mate." Mm. Yeah, mm. definitely, definitely. <laughs> but, mm. Okay, so moving on to some questions from... I've had lots of questions, by the way, because you've got a lot of popularity and fans out there. <laughs> I want to hear... This is a this is a mix of everything from that you've done. So Christopher, Christopher, who is on Twitter as The Irish on Fire, do you feel like Fringe got its just ending? If not, how would you have ended the show? Who asked that question? Uh, Christopher, his name is... At, Christopher? Yeah. You know, I, I, I really think it did, and we were we were so lucky because prior to that, you might know this if you've been following stuff. Uh, they the, the the network would just cut shows off mm. like that mid midstream, and that was the end of them. What happened? It got cancelled, and that happened with a couple of really good shows. And with Fringe, they said, "Well, we probably wouldn't have given you a full order, but the fans adore this, and so do we. So we're going to give you thirteen episodes to wind up the story." Now, that was the first time it was done, but I know that it's been done. I was talking to a colleague last night. There's another very popular show that's got the same thing. Mm. 13, to tie up the stuff and get out of there. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, in terms of uh, the hows and the worst, look, you had, to get rid of, you had to get rid of Walter. There was no room for Walter in the new world. There just wasn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in a harsh reality, he probably would have been, had a relapse and gone back to the mental institution, to, yeah. to be honest with you. Uh, I suspect, and and there would have been some sort of. It was almost like this dream happened, but mm-hmm. uh, so that's Walter. But we'd already set up the, the family thing, and and Ella, the little girl, so they, that had to be honoured. <laughs> that Pete, you know, that Peter and Olivia did finally get together, and and they did have a, a beautiful daughter, and that mm-hmm. kind of became the main storyline, I think. So they honoured that, and uh, lots of people loved it. There was there was a beautiful work in those finales. I mean, there was a, a speech that. Uh, which people talk about all the time, where I, I said to Peter Jackson, you are my favourite, my very favourite thing, an extraordinary speech um, that uh, Joel Wyman wrote it, and he, and he rang me a month before, and he said, well, I'm working on this monologue for you, mate. He says, it's going to be fantastic, but I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Yeah. Anyway, it, it turned up, and, uh, and and there it was. And uh, really, I knew, and Jackson, Josh Jackson and I are very, very close uh, uh, as men, but as also as characters, mm-hmm. and so we we didn't didn't rehearsal. What they did is they said this is also unusual. They set two cameras up, one over my shoulder, one over his, mm-hmm. and we just we just nailed it in one take. Goodbye, see you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. that's pretty cool. Gun, pretty impressive. Well, it, well, it it it's it is, but you know, it's the sort of thing we were so ready for it. Yeah, and Josh was, it was as good as I've seen Josh work. Mm-hmm. So I mean, we were we were just ready for it, mate. <laughs> and, and, and it was a beautiful. There's a lot of beautiful moments in there. Lovely moment with Astrid, where he, you know, where he calls her Astrid for the first time. And yeah. All sorts of oh, heart wrenching stuff, really. If you were if you were a fan, you'd watched it all. Mm, yeah, definitely, definitely. I was about mm. to say there was actually um, a question which I'm going to scoot to now regarding mm. Astrid. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was Nikki Cambridge. And no. ja- Jamie, who is at Lady of Mischief on Twitter, they've both mm. asked, can you think of any other names Walter could have called Astrid? <laughs> I'll give <laughs> it a break. Wait, <laughs> a, I, I've got a T-shirt with the names I did call her on, and it's just covered in them. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think we did make up a few, and then, then they'd put in absolute, uh, out of sequence. At one stage, I, I called her Claire, mm-hmm. and, and that one went slipped past. But, but Claire's actually her friend. So it was just <laughs> insane at that point. I don't know. We used to make up. Sometimes we'd have an inspired moment and, and send it off to the writers, but they yeah. were pretty good at coming up with them themselves. <laughs> I tell you, it was, it's, it's a funny little thing to put in there. It's almost like a, 
uh, it's one of those things you might try, just you know, try it out in season one and say, hell, that's good. Mm. Let's keep that going. <laughs> and that's what we did. And there, oh, golly. So funny. <laughs> it, it, was, it was. It was like a little bit. Yeah, it was a little bit of tiny bit of comic relief all the way through. Is you know what? what yeah, what both, are you gonna call it now? Just, yeah, <laughs> he would say it, and she she wouldn't even acknowledge it after all. She just knew and did. So <laughs> let's get on with that job. And uh, just just think of Nicole. Uh, it's just that such a, such a bloody sweetheart, mate. And uh, we had fun. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Marcel Fabio is asking, how do you get your life back or change character after playing such a role for many years in Fringe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, it's it, Marcel. It's it's an interesting question. It's easy to become um, typecast mm-hmm. if you do a, a popular a popular character. Then be very careful because you may not be employed again. Yeah. Uh, so the the essence of it was to come uh, because I'd done so many roles. I wasn't uh, fearful mm-hmm. in the sense that that was the only thing I could do at all. And uh, I went back to Australia and, and did some weird. Terrific things down there, little film and some television and mini series, and I didn't even think about war to be honest with you. Yeah. And then I got a call from uh, um, Alex Kurtzman, who was one of the executive producers on Fringe, and he had this show called Sleepy Hollow, which I knew about. Mm-hmm. He said, "John, will you come across and do it for me, mate?" And he explained the character to me, and uh, I said yes. So the the trick with that was to not uh, not to play Walter. Uh, so, I mean, if they even when I got there, they were dressing the character like Walter, and I said, well, you know, yeah. let's, not do let's not do that. Mm. Uh, so uh, then Henry uh, sort of developed his own his own persona, but it was still kind of in, in, in the realm of that eccentric uh, character. Uh, yeah. But that's quite unnatural because that was the same executive producer, and uh, so I lasted a couple of years there, then I went off to do something completely different in elementary, mm-hmm. which was a dead straight role. Uh, yeah, as a, the uh, Holmes is Holmes which, senior, <laughs> which is what which is what I wanted and what we uh, my, uh, my manager wanted but to just do something else, you know. Yeah. And uh, since then, I've done uh, um, a few things this year, which are different again. So. Excellent. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good. It's great. And like you say, it is difficult to be typecast because I think there are some out there who've been in a role so so long, and, and you're right. It, it, if for someone who's watching it, and uh, if you do feel sorry for the actor themselves because whichever role they're in, people always will see them as that particular character wherever they are, and it's it's bound to happen. It's not you know it's a natural thing, and it's you know, um, so yeah, I guess it can be hard for anyone to sort of, who's been. It's involved. not. It look, and you've got to take it. You take it. I do. I take it as a huge compliment, mate. That you know, if people and they do stop me on the street anywhere in the world and want to talk about you know just say that, what a compliment that is, you know. Mm. So I don't go, oh, you can't call me that. Of course you can't call me whatever you like. uh, (laughs) Within reason. (laughs) Even then, mate, I really really am pretty laid back. I don't mind. Whatever. Yeah, call away. Uh, So, uh, yeah, they do. And you get people from across the road. You're like, well done. I was working with Josh Jackson. He'd done uh, Dawson's Creek where he played Pacey for a long time. Yeah, and he couldn't escape that. He could not escape it, and yet he'd done so much other stuff. But Pacey captured the hearts of all those young girls who are now women in their thirties. Mm. So they were lining up, Pacey, Pacey. He had to grit his teeth, and then he put that smile of his on. He was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, brilliant! That is really good. And I say it's, it's it's nice to see someone who's you know embraces like you say it's a compliment because you you obviously played a character that everyone loved so much. Huge uh, compliment. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's um, to carry it on. Cool. Uh, Michael Danson is mentioned. In, you did a 2013 film, short film, called Friend. Oh, yes. And he's just asking, was your character intended to be a non-fringe universe version of Walter? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I wore Walter's I think I, 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 I wore Walter's costume. <laughs> I did. Oh, Lord. No, the, the the backstory on that work. We were filming in uh, in in Canada, mm-hmm. in Vancouver, and my daughter Jess sent me this this script. She's a writer, and she said, "Oh, Dad, what do you think of this?" And it was uh, the script of French, yeah. of, of friend. And I responded to her and I said, "Well, what I think is, how do I get to audition for it?" And uh, mm-hmm. I thought it was terrific, terrific. So then I asked my friends, the people I work with, 
uh, on, on Fringe, I'm talking about all those yeah. hard-working pros and cameramen and everyone else, I said, I've got this coming up. Anyone want to help? All the hands went up. And so we finished up having this on this, on this wet, miserable weekend, uh, having all of these you know, cameramen and, mm-hmm. and sound guys. and Everybody came out to help. It was so beautiful. Huh. So beautiful, mate. Yeah. And uh, so in answer to your question, no, it wasn't. It, it, <laughs> I don't know. I was in the middle of, in the middle of doing doing what? I don't know. Why would Walter fall in love with balloons in an alternate universe? It's got to be a better one. <laughs> It's a, look, Friend is is is, an, is a very very smart little film, and mm-hmm. uh, and it was a pleasure to do it. So yeah. I loved it. Brilliant! I'll have a look out for that one as well. Mm-hmm. Cool. Gina Bautista. Mm-hmm. Of all the Walter food obsessions, which <laughs> ones did you enjoy the most? <laughs> no, none of them much. To be honest with you, oh my golly. Um, I mean, I could. Uh, there were times when the, he would have eccentric sandwiches, mm. and I didn't mind that. But as for red vines and all those things, oh my lord, I didn't like that. But <laughs> but Walter did anything, you know. He'd pick up a piece of mold off something and say, mm, "Taste that, Peter." Yeah, it's, protein. <laughs> yeah, he, he he would eat anything, and uh, it was always feeding his face, which is consistent, by the way. I mean, with the character development that I did. Uh, totally consistent that sort of obsessive behavior with food is constant with the behavior of that character mm-hmm. so yeah, it was all it's all worked out ahead of time you know we talk about planning that that's something that works for the character if it didn't work for the character yeah. see there would be very very rare times uh with the science for example uh, and i, I said to the writers listen uh, we, we can do anything here it's provided that it's uh, at least feasible in mm-hmm. in, in in theoretical physics, if it's feasible, mm-hmm. then we'll do it for sure. If it's rubbish, then please uh, don't give it. I mean, unless he's stoned off his face. <laughs> I don't want to do that because yeah. a, ten, a tenth grader is going to look at that and say that that's rubbish. Mm. And we only had to pull that a couple of times on uh, experiments that were just so. Uh, some of them were pretty close to the <laughs> close to the edge. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in terms of the alternate universe and some of that more serious stuff, certainly uh, it was feasible. And, and now, of course, we, we know a lot more about it than even then. Yeah. But uh, yeah, wormholes and all that, yeah. I, I mean, I know that stuff. I read it, and uh, Walter was consistent with it. Mm. Excellent, excellent. That's really, and again, it's good to hear the research and stuff to make sure it was. It, that's I think that's another thing that drew everyone to it was the fact that it was. Not beyond the. It was beyond the. Yes. Beyond the. Was it beyond the pro? Yeah, beyond yeah. the probable, but not the possible. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, right. that's the one. That's the one I was trying to think of. I like that. Be <laughs> beyond the probable, but not the possible. Thank you. Write it down. Save it. <laughs> it's a good quote. Uh, I've got just Lizette Alcazar and Jill Judd would just like to say, uh, or they didn't have questions. They just want to say, tell you sincerely that you're one of the best actors that they've seen on TV or film. Uh, um, with Lizette saying, rarely does she feel the emotions of an actor. Yeah, an actor's portraying like she does when she watches you on screen. That is such that's such a wonderful thing to hear because that's kind of my objective <laughs> is to be that mm-hmm. that that raw and truthful that uh, that that's what comes across. And uh, so thank you, Lizette, and who else did you uh, say? That was Lizette and Jill, Jill Judd. Thank you, Lizette and Jill. I I really treasure that comment. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. Mark Longenecker is did you base Walter on anybody because the scatterbrainness really made him feel like he wasn't the only one alive <laughs> <laughs> I lived um, when I was at university uh, I, I shared a, a a flat with a science student who was crazy mm. crazy and uh, we're still friends he's still crazy uh, <laughs> very Walter very Walter like mm-hmm. and he's oh, huge amounts of energy and he, then he's then he's uh, Focus would be fierce. And whatever he did, he did with complete passion. Yeah. Uh, uh, interesting man, but very eccentric. And uh, so I, I used him as, as a, a basis. But also, look, this this there's sufficient there's sufficient research you can do on, for example, um, you know, water coming out of that hospital. Mm-hmm. Or one of the, some of the research I did straight away. So I said, well, I went to people. I said, okay, this guy's been in here. He's been in, uh, subdued on, on chemicals for quite a long time. What would it have been they used on him, and what would the withdrawals be? Yeah, because that would then predicate how I play the first few episodes. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and, and how he will gradually change, but I need to know what they were. And uh, so I found out and, and, you know, found out, well, probably within a, a, a month, uh, maybe a bit longer because he was probably on heavy barbiturates, but, you know, the slow, the slow wind out. Yeah. Um, no, I love that stuff, though. It's, it's like it's a detail that uh, is delicious with it. But the audiences do get it, actually. The audiences are very perceptive, I've noticed. Mm-hmm. And they they very often know more about uh, the stories and uh, the the plots than we do because we, we we're yeah. limited to the, to the scenes we're in, and sometimes it's uh, it's almost embarrassing to go to you know these big fan conferences and you'd be getting questions from the floor and someone will get up and ask a question and go oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but it's something <laughs> it's something that uh, the detail stuff you know particularly Lord of the Rings God Almighty that was. They knew so much. Mm. And speak to me in Elfish and all this stuff. <laughs> and they're still uh, rampant because it was such a, 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 a rich culture to, you know, with all, all, all the wardrobe and the sword fights and yeah. the language. Uh, so you go to the fan conferences and, and the Lord of the Rings people are still there. Mm-hmm. Um, he, I mean, I'm quite surprised when I go to fan conferences. One would have thought now, after all these years, that certainly Fringe would be top of the pops. Hmm. Uh, what, and and oh, the other, what we find is that Fringe and Lord of the Rings are almost uh, equal. Oh, uh, really? Uh, yep. In terms of people that come and buy photographs and what they signed, yeah. Lord, the Lord of the Rings is still way up there. And that surprised me because, you know, bear in mind, hell, it was released 13 years ago. Mm. You know, it's uh, a long time, isn't it? It is, yeah. And uh, yeah, we made it in 1999. So, yes, anyway, it's still... And I think, you know, what's going to happen is that it's passed to another generation and will continue to do so. And, you know, mothers and fathers will play it to their kids as, as my daughter plays certain things to her boys that mm-hmm. she watches as a little girl. So, uh, yeah, it, it'll, it'll live for a very long time. I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a very... <laughs> There's two, two, two or three films of fantasy genre that, that are outstanding, but that's certainly probably the best of them, I think. Yeah, definitely. So, and it's funny when you say that it's, it's so popular. I mean, because I, I go to comic cons here, so well, and I think last November they had is it? Oh, I can't even. Remember, Billy Boyd, Pippin. Yeah. And John Reese Davis was here last month. Oh, yeah. Um, he's a he's another guy who I've admired so much. He's he's a, I yeah think yeah. John. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's a very interesting character. Nice, Jamo. very deep vo- Welsh voice. <laughs> I know he's John, is and he's a he's a he's a highly intelligent bloke. Mm. And he's and he's very argumentative. <laughs> no, he he was. No, but he's, he's, he's a goodie. He's a good one. Yeah, he was, he's very nice actually because he saw my son in the chair and he did, wasn't doing behind the table photos, but he came running out from behind his table oh, to have yeah. a picture. It's lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely man, yeah. lovely man. Yeah. <laughs> cool. uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, Lord of the Rings is very high still at the comic cons that I go to. It's you know, as I say, thirteen years on and it's still regarded as I, one of them. I heard just recently. That there's a bloke in Wales that wants to do a, a, a con just on Lord of the Rings, and I think he tried last year, and then he's trying again this year. Um, I, I can't do it as it turns out, but I wonder what the, that must be down south. I think. Yeah, it could be. That'd be, that, that, but that'd be risky after all these years. Although I think I think in Germany they still do a. Uh, they do ring a con. ring con, don't they? In Germany, yeah, that's still yeah. very very popular. That, that's still going. That used to be huge on a few of those back in the you know, back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's a yeah, that's still going on. Um, I know there's some people who went last year as well to that. Because Jed, yeah. yeah, Jed Brophy was in the Hobbit as Nori. Uh, I think he plays Sharku, the one of the war riders. Um, he's he's frequents them as well. Oh, well, he does. He loves them. <laughs> he loves them. He's, he's always sort of. Uh, it was it was a wonderful opportunity for a lot of players mm. who were perhaps not featured so much, but. Uh, they went to those conferences and get, gave them a lot of confidence and travelled the world. And Jed was one of those. And then he went on to uh, you know, get better roles. Yeah, uh, the Shannara Chronicles. He was in as the yeah. as the main protagonist in, in yeah. Shannara. No, he's, he's good. He's good. Lovely man too. I like I like him a lot. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun with him. He's a very very mm. pleasant pleasant chap. Yeah, he is. And, and Ryan Gage, as we met as well, he was the he played Alfred in the Hobbit, not the one you're in, um, <clears throat> but he was great. I'll always forget, never forget, he offered my son sweets at Comic-Con and my son doesn't like sweets, he doesn't like them, and he refused point blank to eat them. So he was just like, oh my God. 
That's a good story. I like, I like yeah. the sound of that stuff. Ryan just said, you've got, you've, you've, he goes, you've got it right, kid. Funny. <laughs> it's brilliant. Funny, okay. funny, funny. That's good. That's your oldest child. You get one child? Yeah, one. Ten years old. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. One's enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I had three of them, so, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, one, one's great. One ten-year-old. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, one ten year old boy. He's all right. He's apple in the eye. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, moving on. Patty fight or feet. Would you be interested? Uh, would you be interested to know, or would you be willing or interested in spin off of Fringe? Maybe about Walter's journey after he entered the parallel universe in the final episode. Yeah, it's been discussed. Uh, uh, it's been discussed several times. Mm. Uh, ugh, you, you, you'd have to be. You'd have to be very clever to pull that off because. Walter was very popular, but a lot of it was to do with the relationships. And so his relationship with all of the characters, really, mm-hmm. which which uh, got deeper and deeper, and uh, and the one with his son was magnificent, and, and he finished up having a wonderful relationship with Olivia and Jessica. Those were, I always thought that was the relationships that kept the show going year after year. Um, that's what people what touched people. and uh, Yeah. Uh, so the, the answer to your question is, Hmm. Well, I mean, a good, good writer to do something, but uh, um, yeah, I, th- I think you could. Uh, I'd certainly, I would certainly look at anything that that, that offered that. It's so complex. So, oh my mm. goodness, so complex about who owns it and who owns the character. Uh, and, uh, uh, I know. Yeah, that's uh, legal wranglings so. everywhere. <laughs> oh my golly! Yes, that's right. So, uh, yes, the answer is yes. I would. Okay, excellent, excellent. I'll just name mention Kevin Tucker also asked the same question on that one. Well, same answer, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> well, give, I could give Kevin a separate answer, and that would confuse people. Yeah. <laughs> alternate universe, yeah. <laughs> give a Walter <laughs> a Walter answer and a alternate answer. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yadalet Rivera Colon and Regiana Santos. What was your favourite mm. part about playing Walter and Walter Uh huh. Oh, the, look, what, what, the the character enabled me, the actor, so much freedom, mm-hmm. and basically all of the skill sets that I developed over a lifetime, uh, I got to use in some time or other, uh, and that was wonderful and so rare to be able to do that, and uh, so and and I and I could play. I just played. I was, I felt like it was a lot of it's hard work, but a lot of it just felt like play. Uh, with playing Walter because he was so eccentric and so out of left field. Yeah. Um, uh, best scenes, best part. Blah. Oh my golly! You see that the scene I mentioned with Peter. A lot of stuff with Peter was beautiful. Mm-hmm. I had some uh, gorgeous, gorgeous scenes with Anna and, and Jessica at different times. But best part about playing Walter was the yeah, look, the freedom to play. If I could, if someone said to me, "Look, you, you you've got one one more role left in you." To write it, go away and write out who it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would have been that character. That's, that's how much I love playing him. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. That's a nice thing to hear as well. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Okay, Simon Barry Borisboa. Uh, in 2011, you played the character of Leyland Monroe in mm. Team Bondi's video game L.A. Noir, mm. and you're also the Scarecrow in Batman Arkham Knight. Both games mm. applauded for dramatic storylines, thematics, and visuals. What were your memories of working on those two games? What was your opinion? I mean, because that's a very different thing again, isn't it, working because you're just like, you know, voice over voice acting for those types of... Yeah, the second one, the second one's voice acting. The first one was, uh, I don't know why it was very interesting. Mm. A, friend of my, a friend of mine from Australia uh, owned Team Bondi and, he, and they, oh, they approached me at one stage and said, mate, will you come in and, and do a test for us? We, we, you know, I'll pay you but just a couple of hours and we're going to test this technique where they wrap me up in everything skin tight and so forth and they were doing tests with you know, many cameras around me and yeah. all that sort of stuff. And I thought that was the end of it and then he, uh, I was working in America and I got a call uh, uh, could you could you come could you come back and do a bit more and I said the only chance I've got is Christmas mm-hmm. because I was working so I went back at Christmas and, and did a whole series of more of them then came back and I was working in uh, Vancouver and another call came through and said can you please do the show? I said, mate, I can't. I mean, you're in Australia, I'm here. No, no, we're going to do it in LA. And it worked out perfectly. And uh, that one was was uh, 
you know, that was the thing where you put the the, the suits on with the with the uh, yeah, the little uh, balls everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and then we we just uh, the good thing about it was we just then acted it out, uh, mm -hmm. and it was, it was a very good cast actually. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we just acted it out as if we were doing the scene or improvising the scene. Yeah, uh, that was what was special about it. But the face recognition, a lot of the technology was new. Mm -hmm. It's a great story. So that was, I thought, was a, a real uh, groundbreaker, and and set and set a standard for stuff that, that came behind it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, very very special. Well, the the second one, well, you know, that franchise, Heavens, <laughs> um, it's huge, it's mm. a, it's a huge franchise, the, the Batman and Scarecrow is one of those characters people know about. They may not have had. The same high opinion he was at on, on some of the others, the Joker and so forth. But it was a great role, and he he, he was the featured player in that uh, game, yeah. The featured villain, and uh, uh, but that's that, that stuff takes so long to do. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's not just walk into a sound studio and do it. You because you keep coming back as they do rewrites and they come up with new versions and new places that the player can go. It's all going to be uh, it's all going to be done. Yeah. So uh, I actually voiced that over a period of probably eighteen months, I think, off and on, uh, before we find and and even then they were so gorgeous these people they wanted to keep changing it and finally Warner Brothers said to him, "Stop it! <laughs> you stop it! You've already, they, we'd already uh, sort of put off the opening date a little bit. Hmm. Stop it now! But 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 stop! <laughs> so they had to stop to release the video." Oh, they were gorgeous, so creative these guys, brilliant, you know. And uh, oh, I've got another idea. <laughs> One of the best parts about that, we went to MCM Comic Con yeah. uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, uh, Brian Cooney had brought me across separately, but then they found it. So we, we did the launch of the Batman. They brought the Batmobile over from America, the whole bloody oh, great cool. thing, mm -hmm. and put it up in the hall and then photographs of me and the creators. It was fun. Nice. Yes. That was a very successful game as well, I, I it was, do yeah. believe. It was, yeah, very highly successful, that one. Highly successful. Mm. I apologise about my lighting, by the way. My light's broke, so that's what I'm well, I, I just realised I'm kind of dark. You look beautiful. <laughs> it's hiding oh, the double, it hides, it hides the double chin better. See <laughs> what this light does for me. Hey, what am I doing? I know how to, I know how to operate a light. There. Oh, there you go. It's a difference, doesn't it? Nah. If I had a torch, I could start shot. If I had a torch, I could shine on the side of my face. I won't do it. I'll let you. You can have it. Oh, it's pretty fun here. I'll let you have this. I like that. I'll just go back to the sunlight streaming through my window. In Texas, yeah. It's, it's cloudy, Texas. miserable out by my window. <laughs> cool. Evan Velazquez, what was the most challenging scene to film in your career to date? Oh, God. Did it oh, for different reasons, uh, different things. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just really uh, hard. I'll give you an example, and it's from Lord of the Rings. There's a scene in it where uh, he says to Faram Faramir, comes back wounded, and he takes him into the into the vault, and, you know, no tomb for Denethor and Faramir, and mm -hmm. he, he decides to burn both of them uh, alive because he said that's the way the, the, the king should go down, not like yeah. to die like the heathen kings of old was his uh, expression. And so I'm. Uh, so you got Faramir laying down underneath me, and I'm standing up on top of this pile of wood, very high up. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I've got to do is take this this uh, uh, huge vat of, of oil mm. and pour it over my head, and uh, and of course pour on David when it was underneath me, so he was coughing in the eyes. <laughs> that was very difficult because we had to get it right first time. Because the, the changeover and getting that costume and so forth cleared yeah. for a second take even would have been momentous. So that was kind of, there was pressure, there was a lot of pressure because it was very unstable on, uh, up there on those uh, pieces of wood. Mm -hmm. I felt that was difficult. Um, he, that was just f physically difficult. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's some awfully, awfully difficult lines to have to deliver, like when Faramir says to him, you know, would you rather I had died? And he says, yes, I wish that. And we go, oh, fuck, who said that? <laughs> who would say that? Yes, exactly. <laughs> but I worked out that you could. And, uh, oh, no, <laughs> what else? Most difficult scenes. Uh, t sometimes they can be difficult if another actor's having problems mm -hmm. um, and, and starting to act up a bit because he, he or she is anxious. That can be difficult because you have to be 
gracious enough and generous enough to know that it's just a horrible day that someone's having. Yeah. They're not doing it to personally upset me, mm -hmm. but sometimes it goes on a bit. Um, it doesn't happen that much, but it happens a bit difficult scenes. Oh, no, I think... No, I, I love them all. Even the, the more the more dangerous they are, in some ways, like the more exciting they are. <laughs> and uh, and I get they let me do a little bit of my own stunts, mm -hmm. which I love. But they won't. Excellent. Um, I, they won't let us do too much because they can, we can't afford to get injured. You know that. Yeah. But I love it. Oh, yes. Just to do a, a fall off something backwards or something, or have a fight. I love all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know. Hard. Yeah, there was some hard stuff. Like sometimes there were just days that were just hard from beginning to end. Mm. Just, just hard. And and I I hate the cold. And we filmed in Canada a bit and New York too. So cold. And I hate the cold. <laughs> so that that was <laughs> that wasn't great. Um, but what can you do? I know. Well, when you're born, when you're when you're an Australian and you, you're living in Texas out there, you know, you, I, I'm, I'm sure, pretty sure the cold is something you're not very much used to. <laughs> no, I don't like it very much. No, I'm just sitting here in 92 degrees heat now. It's beautiful. I was out at 6:30 this morning in the garden. I tell you, mate, it's a good life. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but I've got to go back to work though. So, yeah, I had fun. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Well, uh, Regiana Santos, this last couple of questions for you now. You'll be relieved to know. <laughs> Regiana Santos is she knows that you're very interested in science so yeah. she'd also like to know if you have any religion or beliefs that way uh, interesting question very provocative question yeah <laughs> uh, uh, no but I understand and, and, I, and I appreciate the, the thought that went into it uh, uh, look okay well, I'll answer it as honestly as I can I was raised uh, as a strict Catholic Mm -hmm. um, of the Irish Catholic uh, belt, you know, and, uh, and that certainly gave me uh, uh, some very strong and good values, and also some which were um, off key and and wrong, frankly. And then they were uh, they were just changed by the church. You know, we thought it was a mortal sin to do them a week before. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I I, I I kind of lost I lost track of of of, of the truth. The beautiful truth mm -hmm. of uh, the Christianity that I knew, and then I sort of searched around a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, and finally, it's it's distilled down to this: institutionalized religion seems to me uh, has corrupted or corrupts, and uh, and, uh, and that's sad. That's very sad. Yeah. And we're seeing the, the fact that you know that religion is playing such a large part in in politics is anathema to me. Because I come from, like in Britain and Australia, mm -hmm. we keep separation of powers. Yeah, a matter of dignity, but not here, my golly. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I, organised religion, though, uh, a person's beliefs. Now, if you, I'll tell you something. If you look at, say, the the top four or five great religions in the world, they are the, uh, the core belief system is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, I mean, culturally, it's been picked up and done something different, mm -hmm. but you know, and and that's a uh, that's a wonderful thing, you know, that the, the wisdom of of, of of a Hindu or or someone that read the Quran or Christian or uh, that the wisdom of a Jewish person was mm -hmm. the same. And oh God, yeah, thank you, thanks very much. Well, why are we killing each other? You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, it is. Like it killing each other. Uh, so, as a result of which, and the long way to answer that is that I found out that within, it's not a religion, it's a way of life, uh, called Buddhism, there were mm -hmm. belief systems that you, which were consistent with, with those, but without the um, um, without the stuff that I found uh, uh, uncomfortable. Yeah. And so, I guess, I, guess I, I never really made a decision to, to, to become a Buddhist, I don't think I am. But I certainly do practice that, and I certainly, um, people come to my home, and you know, they, every quarter they walk around with a Buddhist statue, and they're like, you Buddhist? <laughs> oh, I suppose I must be. I was just a belief system, uh, uh, but I certainly respect. Um, Ms. Santos may well be a Catholic with a name like that, it's from Portugal maybe. Uh, and, uh, you know, the great Catholic Church, mm -hmm. which, which I, I remember with such affection as a child, such affection. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, there you go. 
Oh, she's Brazilian looking at her profile. So yeah, she, but yeah, so yeah, be the same. Oh, that's the not bad. <laughs> that's Brazilian, Brazil, Brazil, Portugal, okay. Yeah, not far. Portuguese, speak Portuguese. So, yeah. They do, yeah. exactly. And, <laughs> so, I, and tell her I'll come there. I actually, people have been saying to me for years, oh, we want you to come to Brazil. I said, I'll come, I'll come, just invite me, but I never do. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the other things she wanted. I did say I'd show her this as well. She did tweet this, but um, I know we talked about Twitter before, so she wasn't sure if you'd seen it. She'd done a portrait of you. If I'll... She'd done... Did, did, she'd done... Don't... Can you see that? She'd done some I, I acknowledged it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I acknowledged her for that. <laughs> no, I did. Uh, I sent her a tweet back, which is not... I'm, I, I must have gone on a Twitter just the last couple of nights, mm. and I saw that, and I acknowledged it. So ah, she probably you... seen it. Since probably since questioning, sent the question in to, to them. That's yeah. She was just. Uh, I, th- I said I'd show it to you, and I. So. <laughs> no, uh, look, look it's, it's amazing. Some of the, uh, some of the art that people do and show me. It's it's really uh, amazing. Yeah, there's some fantastic then, artists out there. <laughs> oh my golly! And then you got these people that make miniatures. Mm. That came in. I was at a conference somewhere or other, and someone came in with a head which was about. I've, I've seen a photo of it, yeah. And then the other day, out in the mail, mm-hmm. uh, I, I've been to uh, uh, to Switzerland for a conference and uh, didn't think too much about it. And then from Switzerland, from someone, mm-hmm. they didn't say who, <laughs> this um, beautiful, God, about eight inch tall statue of of me. Yeah. Oh, it just, it's just, I actually should tweet it. It's just beautiful. Really gorgeous, but the best the best look uh, that I've seen mm. of this little statue. And I wish I knew who said it. So if somebody in because uh, it had all the the Swiss markings on the box, right? I mean, I should tweet that, shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. Just say ask ask out. I know um, a company called DID because I collect the, the one six, which are like the twelve inch figures, the mm-hmm. movie figures. And I know a company called DID. That's where that little head came from. Made ones of you, Josh, and Anna, as well. Um, for, uh, for, they did a fringe series, so they did a few there, and they were spectacular. Um, they really were. I'll be blowed. Yeah. See, we don't. Uh, we don't. I mean, as you probably know, we 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 don't get anything out of merchandise. Uh, no. Merchandise, which sort of seems a bit rough in some ways, but I think that, <laughs> I think that that case was lost many years ago. So I don't know what goes on until I see them. Someone came up the other day to me, I was in Cincinnati I think, and they came up with this book with my photo on the front of it and mm. it's a book, my story. I've never seen this in my life. <laughs> Will you sign it please, certainly? What the hell does it say in there? <laughs> uh, so someone has taken uh, the, the character and, uh, and, yeah. and built a, something up around it. Yeah, good on them. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a, the whole thing about fandom is that it's, it's a, it, people look a bit cockeyed at fandom, but it's, a, it's really, for the most part, a really healthy hobby. It is definitely. I mean, there's some f- amazing writers who do fan fiction writing. I've, oh. I've, I know quite a few from different ones for like Lucifer and Constant. Mm. You know, com- they're, they're brilliant, mm. and you know, they the artwork. Like you say, some of the artwork that comes out of oh. them is just yeah, stunning. Yeah. It really amazing. is amazing. They're, they're amazing. They're amazing artists in the broader sense of the word. There's no question about that. Yeah. And uh, so, and and I, and I go along to summer, and I watch all these people. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe something like Dragon Con, mm-hmm. and there's thousands, thousands of people there dressed up, and they just haven't bloody fun. Yep. And then they they sort of go around all day in their costumes, and then they they go and get changed, and they party all night, mm-hmm. and and do what goes with partying, and they come in the next day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good no, fun. Yeah. It is. It is. I turned up last year to one of Sloth from the Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Yeah. It's the only time oh, I've ever dressed up. Good for you, mate. <laughs> did you take his son? I did, yeah. He he, he yeah. didn't... What did he go dress? Did he dress up? No, he didn't that time. Not, uh, not 10 years old, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, exactly. He's got to that age. No, he's like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thanks very much. I'll, just, I'll, I'll take me footy with me and then they'll know that I'm all right. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Cool. Okay, the last question from someone who sent one in is from Jamie at Lady of Mischief. Um, she goes, were you able to keep anything from the set of Lord of the Rings? Do, 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 you, do you know Jamie? I don't know. Um, well, what do you call him, Lady of Mischief? Oh, sorry, that's a, sorry, that's a Twitter handle. Is Lady of Mischief? Oh. <laughs> Apologies, yeah. I thought you, I thought you were saying Jamie, the Lady of Mystery, like you knew her personally. No, no. So my mind was going, well, Jamie. Yeah. Uh, no, no, Jamie, nothing. Uh, some some actors 
did. I, but you see, I don't, I, I don't collect anything. I'm not a collector. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's not something that I I, I, I I'm uncom- I'm uncomfortable with. Um, here's the true confessions. I'm uncomfortable with uh, uh, accolades of past performances mm-hmm. because they can actually freeze you in a certain place. And uh, uh, so if you you know say you know, uh, an award, some people will put up a. I feel uncomfortable. I feel almost nauseous. I said I can't even take that into account. Yeah. Because. The next, and I always say, but hang on, my best work's ahead of me, and I mean it. No, oh, I did, so I don't keep them. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, so I haven't got. I don't know, think. No, 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 no. So the, a lot of that stuff, went, a lot of my stuff went on with the touring stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. The uh, so I wouldn't have, and, and and you know, when you're traveling all the time, it's it's difficult to lug around extra stuff. Yeah. So no, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> and I, if I had done so, I, I don't know where it would be by now. <laughs> um, you know, I'll tell you what I do think is fantastic, and that's that, uh, oh, it, 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 the Observer's Notebook. Did you ever see that? No, no, I've not seen that one. Oh, it's it's absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah. So if you get a chance to look at that, I mean, it's, I think that was stunning. Observer's Notebook. Anyway, it's a, it's, it's a, a substantial publication. Uh, of the background of, of making of uh, Fringe mm-hmm. and uh, all the characters and, and beautifully presented. Uh, uh, so if anyone is interested in getting a very good uh, piece of, you know, the real history of it. Yeah. And there's, also, there's photos of, of, of not only us, but, you know, the other people that are involved in it and their own stories. Mm-hmm. Observe it. Observe it. No, it I'll must be. Look, yeah, I'll have a look for it. Hmm. Yeah, so anyway, that's, that was good. What, what what took me down that path? You asked me something. Oh, we're do, dealing with Lady of Mystery still. Yeah, no. But no, whether you took anything of Lord of the Rings. I, so, I, I, that, I, could, yeah. I could be all highfalutin and say I took away a life experience, but I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I took away a very big paycheck. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent, excellent. I mean, okay. Finally, before I sort of sadly um, close the interview, is it, you mentioned that you got other things coming out, which you have. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. we're not, you know, it's not just Fringe and Lord of the Rings. Obviously, you are a very talented mm-hmm. and accomplished actor. So, what else can we Thank see you. you in coming? You're welcome. What else can we be able to see you in coming up? If you're allowed to talk about it. <laughs> uh, do you know? And I think probably people know this. Uh, I left uh, Sleepy Out for season two. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't happy with where my character was going, so. Okay. And then I went back at the end of uh, season four after a conversation with Tom Meissen in London mm-hmm. and uh, wound out that made major father-son storyline. That took us through till mid-January. Then I had a couple of months off, which I wanted, and then I just I went up to Portland, Oregon, to do uh, an episode of, of a thing called The Librarians, Yeah, uh, which was a series. lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went to, and this is where I'm going to be hard. Then I went to Toronto and did, started to work on a series, and I can't tell you anything about it. <laughs> so I'm going back to do that. And then I'm going to, then I'm booked to go to Mexico to do a film. Then I'm supposed to go to, to New York to do a play. So it's sort of starting to start. Yeah. Look all right. I'd like to get, I'd like to get one more series regular. Um, just that there's something about being a series regular, just the continuity of it, um, which I, I, I enjoyed. I was never bored with it. Yeah. Um, I, anyway, this, we'll see. If not, it doesn't matter. These, these are good. These are the gigs. And it, it does it does free me up to spend more time home. So We'll see, my friend. But as I say, there's so much around and, and a number of writers that have said to me, well, mate, I'm creating something great for you. <laughs> but this is Hollywood, and that's what you get told all the time, you know. So we'll see. I don't know. And and people say, "Why don't you retire?" <laughs> you got to be kidding. <coughs> retire? What? No, I don't retire. This is this is friend. You talked about friend, a little film. Mm. Friend, that was our symbol. And I found this this thing. Uh, I thought I'd keep it on my desk to remind me of my daughter. There you go. Just thought I'd share that with you. So, uh, Chris, what else do you need to know from me, mate? 
You've just stopped. I stopped hearing you then. Mate, you've gone... That's because I put myself on mute there, sorry. <laughs> you're Apologies for that. You didn't want me to hear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you get, get, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to get rid of this asshole, but just give me another minute. Hi, John. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Is there anything you'd like to say um, in, in ending to the fans who are watching and listening, to those who are out there? Well, I... If, it, it's, it's. Uh, I think that a lot of people have the wrong impression of fans. Uh, mm-hmm. They think they always think they'll ask me, "You must get harassed a lot," and uh, the answer is no. People will speak to me, but it's not harassment. And uh, the only time that we, the the only limit on it is, and, and, and Penny asked me to do this. He said, "Look, when we're out to dinner, can you please don't." Uh, you know, because people rush up to yeah. the table all the time. And I, I just then got to the stage, I said, look, I'm just having my dinner, but I'll see you outside afterwards. Yeah. Um, but no, people have been terrific. And uh, um, it's very touching that somebody has taken your work and found it that, um, well, whatever they found it. I just, it's just very touching. So I, I'm, I like the fans. I love talking at the, the fan conferences and so forth just to, to hear their views, some of them are very smart, and mm-hmm. and then you get other occasions. You know, and this is almost worth going out on. When we did, uh, when we were doing fringe, it just kept getting bigger and bigger at Comic Con at San yeah. Diego, and uh, we finished up the last couple of years in the big, 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 big mm-hmm. room there, mm-hmm. five thousand, I think. Wow! And the last time we walked out, the stage was full company, and we walked out on stage, and uh, everyone in the audience held up a piece of paper. With a white tulip on it, uh, which is very significant because it was a wonderful, wonderful episode called White Tulip, and and <laughs> it was astonishing. Yeah. Uh, the, the, well, it, it's a wonderful symbolic uh, symbol too, but a uh, symbol. But uh, they'd all somehow or other acknowledged us. It was a real tear fest on stage. Uh, I think Josh and I were the only two that were blubbering. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Uh, the rest of them were having tears all over the place, <laughs> uh, but it was, it was a great, it was a great send off uh, from those people. Yeah. We, we were so we were treated so well by our fans, and I think this, I think that what what Fringe proved a point is this: that the fans can uh, affect uh, network choices, mm-hmm. and now no one really realised that before, and then suddenly uh, they're finding that with social media. Uh, they, uh, you know, that told exactly what the fans think, and and uh, and they they start to listen. And, uh, that, that's a great thing. It's great. Yeah. That, that's the great thing about social media is that, uh, you know, if you've got if you have an opinion, you'll find that you do have a somewhere to say it, and uh, uh, and find a group of like-minded people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, there's there's a lot a lot of fantastic things about social social media. Uh, I'm not a knocker of it, even though I'm of a generation that does knock it a lot. I think it's amazing the way that it's opened our, uh, our world up and will continue to open it up so we won't be victims to small-minded demagogues. You know, we'll yeah. talk to our, we'll talk among ourselves and we won't be conned as easily as we were before. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Brilliant. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. It's all right, mate. <laughs> Thank Love you me. so much, John. Truly appreciate taking your time to talk with me today and answer everyone's questions. I had an absolutely fantastic time listening to you and I could talk with you all day. Thank you to all my guests and all the, all the <laughs> everyone who sent in questions. I hope you got the answers that you were looking for. This has been Hellblazer Biz with special guest John Noble.